Hi there, this is Joanne from TrueAuthenticPower.com from Tapping.me, and I'm also the creator of the program Catapulting to Confidence. I want to talk today about how emotions get stuck when there's no safe way to process them. And the intensity of our emotions can go from slight to gigantic and really detrimental and painful. And I think that's one of the things when I hear comments in a lot of groups, there's always a theme of, I can't get going, I'm sabotaging myself, I'm procrastinating, I can't, I can't move off the mark. And people just try to keep pushing through that when there probably is some emotion or emotional events or emotions, plural, that are stuck that say to your mind and body on a subconscious level, I'm not safe. I can't go there. It would be detrimental. That's not conscious. That's subconscious. But if something is preventing you, most likely you've got some emotional energetic vibration that is stuck that is holding you back. And to push through it just causes a lot of pain and angst and suffering. And so I wanted to talk about this a little bit today. When we go through an emotional trauma, and I that can be anything from things that you don't remember because you were too little to some horrendous something or other that you went through that you do remember. It puts your body into a state of freeze and shock and replay. And every time you go through something that feels similar, it's like our antennas are on high alert to say, oh, there it is again, or I'm feeling it again, or there's the replay again. And it's so striking to me how in our culture, we just do not teach people how to deal with those things. And instead, we teach them be ashamed, be afraid, run for cover, hide, be insignificant, and everything that works against our power, our skills, our talent. And when I say power, I'm not talking any kind of forceful power. I'm just talking about what our gifts and what we radiate, what we're capable of, the things that we're born with that are innate to us, that are our gifts, our talents, our strong suits. It's not about power as in being powerful and us over them or being dominant or any of that kind of language. It's just living in who you're meant to be. So what happens when this goes on? Okay, so you may be in some horrific type of environment growing up where you would say it was very abusive, you may have good people around you who just didn't know how to support you. So the common theme that I seem to run across with my clients and in discussions with people in groups is that the safety element is missing. You may hear some people talk about, oh, I need a safe space or creating a safe space for yourself, which is very hard to do when you've got your subconscious mind running you with emotions and stuck emotional events. But I think one of the things that seems to be really, really important, and I know it has been for me too, is that when we can't process emotions at the moment, in the moment, feel comforted, feel nurtured and heard and understood and given that space to feel what we feel, not against someone, not You know, if you're in rage, it's not okay to rage against someone. That's not what I'm saying. But when there's an internal struggle or that feeling gets stuck and then it happens over and over again and you replay it, it builds up momentum instead of being able to release it and let it go. One of the reasons I got so into energy tools was because I saw them work on traumas and tragedies and things that got stuck. It didn't even have to be as big as a trauma and a tragedy, but when something gets in a frozen state within our energy and mind, it runs our life, whether we know it or not, and it's so uncomfortable. But did you ever have a space to process those feelings and emotions? I don't know about any of you, but I do remember hearing as a kid, and I don't, I don't think my parents used this one on me, but I, somehow it, I do remember hearing it from either others or in talk or something. I don't know, you know, stop your crying or I'll give you something to cry about. Really, that is not going to help, although it limits the embarrassment and shame when you're out in public. But here's why energy tools are so beneficial. 
You don't have to rage against someone else to process your emotions. You don't have to attack someone else to process your emotions. But you can use energy tools to get out the angst, the strife, the heartache, the sadness, the pain, the suffering, the fear, the anxiety. Name the emotion. It doesn't matter what the emotion is, but there is a way to process that. And that's one of the reasons why I so believe in energy tools and techniques. When those emotions get stuck, and it can be anything, like I'll give you some some personal examples. Okay, so people have heard me talk about the nun in first grade that was really, she was threatening, and she was mean, and she felt dangerous to a five, six-year-old. And when that doesn't have a place to go, it goes internally and starts to create havoc with your nervous system. Watch out. Be careful. Be on alert. Be nervous around her or someone that she represents, meaning other teachers, maybe other authority figures, maybe people who look like her. Go to something like, okay, I had my tonsils out and there's a, (laughs) I can understand how that was part of the scenario going on back then. But at any rate, um, you know, when you're stifled a lot, your voice doesn't come out and you can develop backed up energy in your energy center of the throat. Suffice it to say, there was a lot of that going on in school. And there was a rash of the idea of let's just take the tonsils out instead of figuring out what's going on that would cause the tonsils to act like that. That's another story. Side story. Sorry. But I had my tonsils taken out. And when that happened, back then, yes, I'm old enough, back then, they didn't have parents stay with the children. I remember being in a room at night in a lot of pain. I couldn't speak. That was before they had help buttons, or at least they didn't have a help button where I was. I was in a room all by myself. I couldn't ask for help because I couldn't speak. I was in so much pain. That's a trauma. That's a big trauma. It's not that it was really anybody's fault because parents weren't allowed to stay with their children. But I'm in this huge room suffering, in pain, scared. It's dark. Nobody familiar is around. And I'm all alone in this room trying to process this fear. What a difference it would have made if there was some comfort, some nurturing, some holding, some I've got you, you're safe, it's all over, you'll feel better soon. I'm not saying that would have necessarily done all the clearing for that kind of event. But my point is, it went internally instead because there was no way to externally move it out. And tapping, energy techniques like tapping, and there are several, that's not the only one, but that's the one I talk about the most because I've seen the most happen with it, not only for people around me, my loved ones, but for clients as well. That's not the only technique, but that's one of them that will move out that fear, that panic, that angst, that hurt, that suffering, that what have you done to me feeling, that no one's around to help me, I'm scared, I'm lonely, it's dark, or I'm angry that someone has put me into this position. I don't remember feeling that way. I remember feeling very scared. My point is, it wasn't that someone was delinquent in taking care of me or that they were bad people around me, but there was no way to process those huge feelings that were so strong in that event. You get what I'm saying? Okay, so you can apply this to those kind of events. You can apply this to abuse from parents, from teachers, from mentors, from you name it. Emotions and emotional events happen. That's part of life. But I think we're doing a poor job as a culture of shining the light on that and telling people there is a way. Do you know you can tap on little children? And they enjoy it and they like it and they feel relief from it. Do you know that there's no age limit on tapping or processing those kind of emotions? That's why I do these videos because people don't know ways to help process. And they may not even be able to do those things on their own or without some kind of guidance. Internet videos are wonderful and I've used them too in a pinch. But sometimes you need a little help getting to the undercurrent. The actual tapping technique is easy to learn and use. It's knowing how to use it. And until you know that there's a way to do that, to bring about safety, to bring about 
nurturing and calmness. Until you know how to do that, it kind of can be a, you know, a swirling, yeah, it's not working. Well, it's not that it's not necessarily working. You've got to know how to get to the emotion and the emotional vents underneath. So let me give you some example. If your self-esteem has been injured along the way from put downs or bullying or whatever, the solar plexus area of your body is where your power, where your self-esteem is located, where you feel your power of your self-esteem. It's where your self-confidence is, your self-esteem, your courage, your ambition. And it can be blocked by different patterns or different emotional events or different emotions that have gotten stuck. Now, the wonderful qualities of having a strong solar plexus energy center is happiness, feeling extroverted, feeling spontaneous, the ability to express your emotions. But when you're imbalanced, and that kind of doesn't, it doesn't resonate. It's, it's being blocked. And I just wish so many more people knew about tapping and to use that on any age from little kids to, you know, people who are at the end stage of life. It can bring such peace and comfort to most people. I'm not going to say across the board, but then again, you have to know how to use it. The common thread that I see though, is where is the safety? Where is the ability to be able to process? And if you didn't get that kind of nurturing or that kind of ability to be safe working through your emotions, then you've got to learn to do it for yourself. You can process those emotions of, I'm angry that I didn't get this. Why wasn't anybody there for me? And all those kind of feelings. But the bottom line is that blame and that victimitis will only get you so far. And if you're just talking it without tapping it through and tapping it out, you're actually reinforcing it to bring you more. So when you are in strong emotions, to be able to tap and go back to the root cause, which means where is the template? Where did I learn this? How do I know to be this angry? How do I, how did I learn to feel unloved? There are root causes and they whittle away and they whittle away and they build up a belief system and a story that I'm sure you replay. I'm sure I replay. I know I replay. It's not a question because it's stuck. There's stuck energy there. Imagine how better it would be if when an emotional event happens, that you could deal with it on the spot. Tapping includes using your fingertips on different points, mostly on your head and, and your upper torso. You're fully dressed. You have your fingers with you all the time. You have the ability to tap with you all the time. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you can process those things when they happen, let me give you another example. You have a major car accident. It puts you into a trauma state. You may shake. You may have reactions of shock and trauma from that accident if it's strong enough or if it catches you in a vulnerable time. And then that keeps replaying. Now you're afraid to drive. Now you're afraid to go certain places. Now you're afraid to drive in that certain kind of weather condition or that time of day or whatever. It's because your energy is stuck. Something has gotten stuck in that moment with the trauma, with the, with the accident. And what would be more wonderful than being able to process those emotions at the time so that you don't have a reoccurring fear of driving at a certain time in certain weather conditions that would replay your event. How wonderful it would be to be able to move out the fear, the anxiety, the shock, the trauma, because all of that works on your nervous system to make you anxious. And anytime you're in a situation that feels similar, it will build on the last trauma. That's why so many things just keep replaying and you think, what the heck? I see that I'm doing this, but how do I fix it? Well, you fix it by figuring out how to move the energy and how to move out the belief and the story before it gets so embedded that it keeps replaying and replaying and replaying. I do these audios to help people understand what is stuck underneath because I hear so much pushing and forcing and beating themselves up, people beating themselves up in groups of what's wrong with me? I can't get past this. How do you do it? 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 Oh, when you learn energy and the power of energy and how it can get stuck and hold in physical parts of your body, 
That's why ailments and things that show up physically show up. That could be where your energy is holding. I've worked on people who were shut down and couldn't speak and couldn't talk because it wasn't allowed in their family, and they have issues in the throat. They have issues speaking their truth. They may get different ailments all over their jaw, in their cheek, because that's where the energy has gotten stuck. You don't have to look to shutting down the symptom. You have to look at what is causing the symptom. Where's the stuck energy? I just wanted to do some videos and continue to do some audio videos that explain what's going on because when I hear people just wanting to go after the targeted symptom, that's not where the answer is. And going after the symptom is not getting to what interrupted your energy in the first place. And were you able to heal any of that? If you're carrying symptoms, you weren't able to heal any of that. You weren't able to process any of that. You weren't able to get the emotions out and release them from your physical energy. Instead, they've gone inside. They've locked up in some way. They're causing symptoms. And wouldn't it be lovely if you could undo those symptoms? I've seen that happen so much with clients, so much in my practice. And things that would seem like miracles or unbelievable of you've got to be kidding me. How the heck did that change? How the heck did that find a solution and a resolution? Because it seems unbelievable. And it seems unbelievable because our culture doesn't teach us how to do these things. If you don't know tapping, if you are really struggling with being stuck with something and you are new to tapping even, you know, you might be able to do some of that on your own, but chances are, as a newbie, you're not going to know how to get to that undercurrent, how to find where things are stuck, how to release the multiple layers of emotions that can happen with one event. My point is, I like doing these audios so that people aren't just going of, oh, I feel a little anxious. Let me go, you know, tap on some anxiety. Because you can be tapping on anxiety because it's replaying and reoccurring for the rest of your life. What you want to do is get to the undercurrent of when it started, what started the template, what was going on, what are the series of events, and what part of those events has got you in a grip. I hope some of these explanations help because I, I really feel it's such a void in our culture to explain what's going on. And most people don't go to that extent to find out about energy or your vibration or how to process emotions until there's some kind of crisis or illness or something has pushed you over the mark that you can't live with anymore and now you're forced to find a solution. If you could be proactive, learn tapping, the younger the better. The younger you use it, the better you'll be. You know, you don't have to wait until things become such a crisis level. Be proactive. Learn how to use energy tools and how to process emotions when they happen. Learn how to process why you're stuck. And if you can't do it on your own, which most likely when you're stuck, you're replaying something of a protection. And if that's very difficult to get to your own stuff. I've been doing this since 2009. And when I'm stuck, I'm looking for other things of, okay, what else could it be? What else might I be replaying? And or I will get outside help. It's not a shameful thing. It's a, I want to get over this. Can you figure it out? Can you help me get to the root of this? I think that's taking your power back, taking control of your life and saying, no, this is not okay. I don't want to live in this kind of fear and anxiety and tension and worry and ugh. But I think people get so afraid of their emotions, so afraid of revisiting the emotional events. I know that's what prevented me for a long time. I was scared to go near the emotions. But if you're working with a practitioner that knows how to do that, they can take that down without re-traumatizing you, without making it so uncomfortably difficult that, holy smokes, it feels like the world is ending when you're revisiting some emotions. No, you don't have to do it that way. And a skilled practitioner or a coach like myself, knows how to do that. But we also can figure out how to get to the root causes and when did they start and what was going on and how to process all that. You don't have to suffer. But don't wait until you're in a crisis. Don't wait until you're sick. Don't wait until things go haywire where you have no choice but to figure out what the heck is going on. And then you're in a panic and even more fear. 
If you can process as you go along, if you can clear out root causes from the past, if you can get to the undercurrent of what's got you stymied and stuck and reliving shock and trauma, oh, life is so much better. I have seen life changes in unbelievable, easy ways once you do that, once you clear out the old stuff. Once you clear out the template that has you replaying the same old, the same old, the same old. I know you know what I'm talking about because there's not a person that I've met that doesn't have some of those replays going on. Like, what the heck? Why do I keep doing this? As soon as you say that, I'm telling you there's some stuck emotions, some stuck events, something that has got your energy and your subconscious in a grip. Isn't that empowering? That's the reason I do these is to give you some power and some hope. But the rest is up to you, whether you take action, whether you learn tapping, whether you reach out for coaches or help or find out what's going on underneath. My bottom line for you is that I wish you peace and comfort and safety processing your emotions and getting to that peaceful inner feeling so that you can relax and take a deep breath in life and enjoy it instead of being on edge and hypervigilant or always worried or always... And by the way, a lot of that is learned. And you can unlearn it. Just saying. If you like these kind of audios, if you like this kind of information, sign up on my website. Join my email list so that you'll know when I put things out, when I'm giving new explanations. You can sign up on my YouTube channel. Some things go up there, some things don't. But the point is, learn now before you're in crisis before things fall apart. Be proactive about your life and your emotional health. Tell me, have you had these kind of events happen to you where something afterwards has gotten stuck or you're replaying or you're dating the same person just with a different name or you keep attracting the wrong people or situations or feelings and emotions keep coming back for where you visit? Do you have any of those kind of things? Everybody does. Share it with us. And until our paths cross again next time, bye-bye for now.